Kiribati is just a speck in the middle of the vast Pacific Ocean. Miles from anywhere, it's the setting for one of the most heroic tales of survival you'll ever hear. An epic story of a young Australian lost at sea. For 46 days he hung on, fighting sharks, battling starvation and raging storms. Then, near death, a miracle rescue. Hey, <laughs> Six hours flying time from Australia, Kiribati is a string of skinny coral atolls straddling the equator. Its waters are shark infested, its weather wild and unpredictable. The last place you'd want to be adrift in a 12 foot tinny. It was here at Christmas that Ben Tukey, his mum, and friends came for an island holiday. And it was here, around New Year, that Ben and his uncle Colbera and a friend set out for a nearby island 40 kilometres away, only to find themselves heading into the teeth of a storm. Yeah, it was like hell. It was just like you get hit by one side and the other side gets hit and you get salt going over your eyes, stinging them. Your backside was just bouncing up and down. And Wind blowing? Yeah, the wind was shocking. Several hours afterwards, Ben's mother, Teosi, his friend, Hannah, and her mum, Irene, set off in a much bigger and safer boat. But soon, they too were at the mercy of the raging winds. The boat ride was meant to take about an hour, and it took more like close to four hours. Um, it was incredibly rough, and we all just panicked because we were seriously wondering whether or not the boat was going to turn and when it was going to happen. Hannah and the women made it safely to land, arriving in port at dusk. But Ben's boat wasn't there, and his mother immediately assumed the worst. That's when I started to get very worried, and I felt like numb, and I don't know what to do, or I can't walk. Like, I couldn't even lift my legs up, and my heart began to get heavy, and I felt like screaming and crying. Ben and his uncle survived the raging storm, but after that, simply got lost. And out here, in this great big ocean, that's remarkably easy to do. The land's so low that if you're more than two k's offshore, you can no longer see it. They had no compass to steer by, they couldn't see the sun because of the clouds, and as they plugged away with their feeble motor, huge waves and howling winds were belting them off course. We were getting quite scared because it was getting dark. We knew that this was a country that might not have the resources to assist us with searching the way we may have been able to in Australia. Within 24 hours, an air search was underway with friends Hannah and Irene on board. But they had no idea where the boat had been blown to and a vast, vast ocean to search. How hard is it to find someone out there? It's impossible. It's really impossible. In the plane, you just see a billion drops of water down there making this big collection, and you realise that you're looking for something that's just 12 foot long in the water, and it's silver, so every little wave was... There, no, there, no. Oh. Ben and his uncle had set out with two litres of water and a bunch of bananas. But after a week, it was all gone. And with no sign of rescue, they needed food and water desperately to stay alive. The good news was they had a hook and line. The bad news was there was no bait. And the fish they saw were sharks. Scared though they were, the hunger was worse. On day 14, Ben plunged his hands in the sea and grabbed a shark. It provided food for a week. Um, so he grabbed it by the, yeah. by the body, by the tail, and yeah. yanked it into the boat. Yanked it into the boat. To catch water, they rigged a tarpaulin, but as the sun beat down, they were forced to drink shark's blood to quench their thirst. It's like, oh, shark's got a weird taste to it, but you just sort of just, and just hold it down there and just breathe through your nose and just, you know, it's just like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and what about water? How did you collect water? Sometimes it wouldn't be enough rain, so we licked the boat. You licked the boat? Yeah. 
to get some water. Yeah, leak the boat, some water. These are men of the sea, and they are so resourceful and so immensely intelligent when it comes to survival. Um, had it have been me on the boat, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have lasted three days. Um, but for them, there really was that hope, well, if they are still floating, perhaps they can make it. At the end of the first week, Hannah and her mum Irene made the long flight back to Australia. It was very intense, is really the only word I can describe it. It was intense sadness. Back on the island, Ben's mother Teosi spent her life savings, more than $20,000, hiring boats to search for her boy. They searched for weeks. I'm always, I always hope that Ben is out there, waiting to be rescued. A month passed without any sign of the men. On board the tinny, trapped in a confined space, with just a few bits of fish to share, tensions boiled over. The young men began arguing when Ben accused his friend Taya of stealing the food. Why did you take the fish? So did you come to blows? Yeah, he got pretty close. Towards the thing, I just went and grabbed the bag of food. I said, I'm hanging on to this. We're all going to eat at the same time, drink at the same time. We're going to grab the knife and we're going to start splitting the food up properly. Now, while you're out there, while you're drifting around, waiting to be rescued, does anyone go by? All up there was about six ships that I reckon they saw us. It's the law of the sea that you help those in distress, but the distressing reality for Ben and his mates was that the ships passed them by, one boat even turning directly away from them. It was coming straight at us, so we were just like, wait, there's a yacht coming straight at us, and we sort of started getting real excited. So I grabbed the longest stick we had, grabbed my uncle's sarong, and tied it onto it, and then we started just sort of like just waving it around and they must have spotted us and then next minute they just started drifting the other way. Yeah, so... Oh, they um, went past you? Yeah, they sort of dodged us. There's no question they saw you? Yeah, they definitely saw us. After more than six weeks in this tiny tinny, the three men had just about got it sorted. They had plenty of water and enough food to last them another couple of months. And then suddenly, Another storm came along and it got worse, much, much worse. In the dark, a giant wave crashed over their tinny, capsizing it. They lost everything and they were now hanging onto the boat with their legs dangling in the water. There was a couple of sharks that turned up and I had a cut on my foot at the time. As soon as I saw it, I just freaked. That's when I grabbed the petrol and just poured it on me and on my cuts, and so I knew the s smell of blood or s stuff probably keep them a bit more keen for a feed, so I thought I'll just put, fade it away with the petrol smell. Sometime after midnight, after six hours clinging to the side of their boat, they righted the tinny and climbed in, but it was now full of water and they had nothing to bail with. After the boat tipped over, it was just like hell. It was just wet 24 hours and things got worse his uncle Colbera was now deathly ill and I told him maybe I can stay with you for one or two more days yeah but if it's more than that I don't think I can stay stay long yeah so what did you say to them cut me loose push me off no I just told them that be strong and what yeah and they don't have to mind about me if I yeah, maybe if I die. die, I have to die. I reckon he was going to make it the next day. I told the other guy that I was going to give him two days to try to help him get the water out of the boat. And after that, after that two days, I was just going to finish myself off if I'm st still alive. And I was just slowly just dying too, so I got sick of suffering, so I thought that would be the I probably want to do myself a favour and I've tried for nearly seven weeks, so I thought I've tried. 
For two and a half days, sitting in seawater up to their waist, with nothing to eat and nothing to drink, they drifted, near death, without hope. They'd been seven weeks at sea, and then suddenly, out of the blue, salvation. A fishing trawler appeared on the horizon. I you know, sort of got up and just saw the boat, and I sort of looked and I said, hey, it's a ship. So I just started wearing my shorts around, butt naked, <laughs> and um, just, just kept waving it, waving it, waving it, and then the boat started getting a bit closer. The San Nanumia, trawling for tuna, headed straight for the disabled boat and hoisted the three on board. It was their 46th day lost, February the 17th. Ben, his uncle and friend, had drifted 250 nautical miles from their destination. The ship's crew fed and clothed them, tended to their injuries, and then delivered them to one very happy mother. When I saw him, I, I stared at him for some time, and then, oh, that's my son. I, I couldn't believe how, you know, how he had changed. So he was so thin, oh, you didn't yeah, recognize him? thin and very dark brown with a beard. He's a very lucky man. He's a very lucky man, and I'm, I think so. I'm a very lucky mother to have my son back. As soon as she could, Teosi rang Hannah and Irene in Australia to tell them the wonderful news. The next day, both women boarded a plane back to Kiribati. Nothing was going to stop them meeting up with Ben. It was the most emotional moment of my life. It was like I'd heard that someone had died and someone was born all at once. stop me from drinking beer <laughs> but um I know I'll be going to appreciate life a bit, a bit more especially with mum and just family any advice on going out in boats oh plenty <laughs> yeah plenty where do you want me to start Take a compass, take some flares. <laughs> That's it. Take some food. <laughs> plenty of food, plenty of drink. And a, and a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Sunscreen. Yeah. yeah, take everything. Bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.